friends, welcome to part one of three in this journal cover stencil video series. Uh, I've got the gesso here, and this is very important. You want to cover your Jane Davenport mixed media butterfly effect book in gesso uh, if you want to get any kind of great thing going on. Uh, you can use a brush or you can use an old credit card or an old room key that I happen to have lying around from a hotel. Uh, you're going to want to put gesso down first and this is the face stencil that we're using today and basically all of these journals covers that we do in this video I'm using that same face stencil and I just want to go through a bunch of different ways that you can use it to uh, as a jumping off point and to inspire your own kind of journaling or you know journal cover whether you want to do this in a book or on your own cover just go for gold and uh, so this this stencil actually comes with the Jane Davenport acrylics so if you've got that go grab this stencil out and if not go and grab any face stencil or any face stamp you've got all the things still apply all of the techniques and uh, ideas still apply so um, I'm kind of piggybacking off the JDMM stamps video that I did ages ago back at the start of the year that project where I showed you that uh, you can use it as a jumping off point and you can uh, create with it and use it as a tool as opposed to, uh, you know, you can totally use it as it is. It's completely good as it is. Um, but if you want to use that to inspire new creativity or to help you skip a bunch of steps where you had to plan out your own face and get it all looking right and symmetrical and blah, 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 especially for a three quarter turned face, I think that's something that, you know, a lot of us take time to learn and uh, if you're already at that point and you just want to you know get it done and get it good then grab this face stencil and I think it'll help a lot with that so uh, I said at the start of the video you want to use gesso and that's because we're going to use a ton of different media on this and the gesso acts as a barrier between you know the, the canvas which can absorb a lot and it uh, acts, as a, acts as a barrier between that and the mediums that you're using. So you'll find that colors will be more vibrant with gesso. Things won't feather as much. You'll be able to use pencil easier with gesso than you would drawing straight onto a canvas. I mean, you can totally try it, but I'm, I just promise you, your life will be easier with gesso. <laughs> so the first example I'm showing you is just straight up using that stencil as it is and draw through it. I know a lot of us have collage mediums and texture pastes and, uh, you know, you know, all that good stuff stuff like ink and we uh, and we use our stencils for that but stencils are you know really actually just easy to draw through <laughs> one of my favorite things to use stencils for is just to draw with them so uh, that's what I'm doing in all of these I'm using it to draw through I didn't stamp or paint through any of the oh, I did use the um, the flower stencil that comes with the butterfly effect something um, I don't know if it comes with the book or the charms it came with something. There's a flower stencil in there that you'll see. <laughs> and, um, or maybe it just came on its own. It probably came on its own. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. What I've done here is I've used the watercolor and this is it dry. So you saw when it went on, it was quite vibrant. And, uh, and with the gesso on there, it will still react like watercolor. It'll still pull, it'll still mix and blend and give you all those great tones and variations, but it will dry down a little lighter than you put it on. So some areas may be darker. If you want to go back in and hit it again with the watercolor, you can totally saturate those colors more. And there is an example of a general cover I did where I did go back in. Um, I use mermaid markers as well and they stay pretty vibrant. They don't, uh, they don't lose a lot of that saturation like the, um, the watercolors might. And obviously each color is different because the pigments are different and they're made differently. So, uh, just experiment with your favorites, but I think I pretty much use almost everything. So if you're curious about a certain color, just look for it in one of the other journal covers and I'm sure you'll find it. Here's the mermaid marker. You know, a lot of this was trial and error. I had practiced on a few journals before. My first mistake was not using gesso. Uh, I completely ruined one that way. And um, then my uh, second mistake <laughs> was not playing enough because I got to a point where I was like, oh, I can only use acrylics and that's it. And that's totally not true. I made that other project, the one where we did the journal covers on the watercolor paper and you just slot them into the, the dust jackets. I made that because I was petrified to start painting these. I didn't want to do them all in acrylic because acrylic is kind of hard for me to use. I'm not that great at it yet. And I just, I want to keep practicing. And it felt really intimidating to do a whole video painting covers with acrylic. And uh, I mean, I do it to myself. I don't have to do this, but I do want to challenge myself in some way. So I thought it'd be a great challenge to take on. And I thought I could just dilute the watercolor and then I'd still be able to see the working lines of the, um, of the stencil. But I thought if I'm going to dilute paint, why not just straight up use watercolor? If I've got the gesso on there, it makes sense that it would still probably work. So, uh, I started experimenting with that and I still got all this great color pooling. I still got, you know, really saturated colors if I wanted to go in there and, you know, really scrub that color in 
over a certain area. Um, you know, it, it takes a bit of patience to get the color build up the way you want it to, but because I did a lot of it just for the background and I was gonna go back over everything anyway with pencils and paint markers and, you know, textures and whatever, I thought it doesn't really matter. If it's in the background, it's just in the background. Like, <laughs> I mean, it matters. Obviously everything matters, but you know, it's not that big of a deal if I'm, if one area isn't totally saturated in color and I'm gonna draw a face over it anyway, what would that matter? So uh, I encourage you, if you've got gesso on your journal, just go for the watercolor. It, it's it's transparent. You can see all your working lines. I think the, um, the effect that it gives is so, uh, really, really nice. And it's totally something you couldn't get with acrylic that way. So uh, yeah, I, it, I just think it worked great. I've used a ton of stuff here. Just It's fair to say I used most everything Jane Davenport mixed media as far as like, you know, the acrylic paints, the paint over pens, the magic ones, the watercolors, the stencil. Um, yeah, I, I went for uh, all the mediums and, and tried to, to get them into this into this three part video. So um, yeah, I'm gonna basically just go through a ton of the different things that I did, maybe some techniques that I found were fun or some mediums that I thought worked better than others. One of the first things I noticed is that with some of the magic ones, if you keep the canvas a little wet, um, they'll go on a lot easier and a lot darker, like a lot more vibrant. So uh, I'm not quite sure what happens there, but <laughs> I do know one thing about colored pencils and if you wanna build up nice rich tones and um, shading and stuff like that, you'll wanna layer them and do, do a lot of light layers. You don't wanna scrub that pencil in so hard that you get this waxy build up and then you can't blend anything anymore. So uh, my first tip, I guess, is if you're using the, the magic ones, do a lot of light layers. And uh, I think you'll find it doesn't stress you out too. If you're taking it slowly and you're really building up that color on the cheek or you're really building up a, a shadow in the corner of the eye or something, uh, using a lot of light layers will, will help you uh, get that effect, get that nice, rich, deep shadow. Here I'm using a Sakura Souffle pen uh, because they come in different colors and they completely worked. Um, they, they worked so well and I was very impressed with that. A Uniball Signo pen also totally worked. I have uh, little black kind of calligraphy brush pens. Um, I guess they're just called brush pens, but the, you know, with the black ink, they totally worked as well. I was surprised that once this canvas was gessoed that you could pretty much use anything you'd use in your journaling on top of it. Oh my goodness, can you hear me? <laughs> my words are already starting to blur together and I've got so much I need to still talk about. Please bear with me. Uh, but yeah, so I totally use another souffle pen. I love the souffle pens, but low key, I'm just a little irritated that they go on so clear. I mean, it, it worked if you've got a really dark background because you can kind of see it, but sometimes I have no idea what I'm doing with them. And it's not until they start drying and they start turning that really opaque color that I was like, oh, well, I was completely out of the line. So, <laughs> so yeah, I do love the souffle pens, but that's my little pet peeve. Um, I've got these Crayola markers. I got these at an airport somewhere, super random. I think Orlando. I uh, found these in like an airport newsagent and I picked them up because they're apparently the adult version of Crayola. They're meant for um, lettering. That's what it literally said on the box. So I was like, I'm gonna get these bougie Crayola pens and see what I can come up with. And they totally worked on top of it too. And it was great because sometimes there's a lot of colors there that I could use. And um, I'll just say anything that I pick up that's not Jane Davenport mixed media, I'm typically picking it up because uh, it isn't in the line. There's maybe a color that I can't get, you know, like a red paint or a green paint. And I could do the gesso and the mermaid marker ink, but I did that in a tag Tuesday and I absolutely used way too much. So I'm kind of terrified to do that again because I don't want to waste my mermaid markers. <laughs> but I had other paints to use. And for this, I just wanted to show you mainly that this stencil is a great tool. It's a great tool to get a ton of different faces. I'm going to go and show you like a bunch of different faces and literally every single one of these journal covers that I did, I used that same face stencil as the starting point. And, uh, and as with everything I always say, it's just your imagination. That's all you're limited by. So <laughs> you can do a lot of great stuff with this stencil. And I'm about to show you this clip here. I, when I got to the end of it, because I know a lot of you were saying like, that's not gonna stay on the canvas or that's not gonna work. Like, you know, this, as soon as I touch that, it'll smudge off. Well, <laughs> I got this Winsor & Newton general purpose matte varnish and uh, I sprayed this over everything. So it's kind of a sealer, like it seals everything in. Anything that I've used that uh, it would typically maybe not be great for a canvas, it should keep it in there pretty well. And it's a matte finish, so it totally just looks the same. You can't even really notice it's on there. 
But uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you the close-ups and then I'm gonna come back in for the next one. Well, I hope you enjoyed those close-ups. I really, really like that journal cover. I just love the color palette that was <laughs> that, that I used, and I, I think she came out really whimsical and really nice. Uh, the second one, this example of the stencil, I just wanted to show you that it works the other way too. You can uh, flip it horizontal and do the face the other way. And I'm using another magic wand to trace it out because it you know, totally works. I just need the outline and I'm going to scrub in the watercolor like I did the first time. I will say I, I kind of cut myself off talking about that, that spray. Um, it is just a finishing spray. And like I said, it should keep everything in there, but as with anything, and we all know traveler's notebooks are meant to be traveled with. So anything that takes, you know, a bit of abuse and kind of a battering, it obviously will start to show signs of wear and tear. But for the most part, this is I mean, these journals, I, I love them and, you know, I think I, I, I think they're going to hold up really, really well because I, I took a lot of time and effort to prep and prime them and seal and spray them. But I just wanted to put it out there that if you do, you know, handle something a lot, it, it you could risk making uh, some of that stuff peel off or uh, I don't think really peel off because I use a lot of watercolor. So it's probably, you know, saturated and seeped in there. But um, maybe some of the ink might fleck off. I really don't think so. Honestly, I've been using one of the journal covers for a few months now that I did because I, I did it the first version of this months ago and nothing's come off it. And I used exactly the same sealing spray. So um, yeah, a sealer is a good idea too if you're using a lot of these mediums that uh, aren't typically what you might use on a canvas. And uh, yeah, so I'll get back to talking about this one. I actually love this journal cover the most, I think. I think there's a lot of good stuff about the other ones, but this one I think overall as a whole, I think is my favorite. And uh, there's not really uh, much going on at the moment. You can see all that color has pulled everywhere and I've used a, or just a mix of all the reds and pinks that I could find in the watercolor palette. I've gone back over it with the magic wands just to darken in some of those lines that I wanna work with and like I said before, this stencil can just be a jumping off point. If you bring the eyelid down and really wing out those eyes, add in some dramatic lashes, you can get such a different feel from it. And you can change this up a million different ways. Like I said, your imagination. The only limit is your imagination. And uh, so as long as it's turned on and you've got one, uh, you could make a billion different things out of this face stencil. And I just... It's just all about cheating, really. I mean, you know what I'm like. I like to cut every corner. Whoa, look at the... Those eyes were so off. Um, I think even at the end of this, I still feel like one of her eyes is just a little tiny bit off. But uh, I ran with it. I think she just looks totally dreamy and doe-eyed anyway. And that, you know, you're really just looking at her lashes. So who's going to know? <laughs> but um, using the magic wands is great for doing a lot of shadow work. Um, you can go back in with the watercolor too. I don't know if I said this before, but if the page is still kind of wet, the, the magic wand will lay down a lot creamier and smoother. Uh, but then again, if you want to build up more layers on top of that, then you're going to have an issue because you've kind of, you know, you've pushed a lot of that pigment in there already. So um, just like I said, if you're, if you're trying to do something specific, do a lot of light layers. Uh, another great tip is if you put on your highlights and you think they're too bright, just smudge them in with your finger. Um, you know, they stay wet for a little bit, especially with gesso, like things will sit on top for a little bit and you can kind of scrub it around and move it around if you want. 
um, paint markers. Paint markers were my best friend doing this project. Uh, especially because, like I said, I was totally afraid to use the acrylics. So having them in a paint marker form just makes it so much easier for me because it doesn't seem like painting. It just seems like drawing and I'm much more comfortable drawing than I am painting. Uh, so I think the paint markers are great. You've got the paint over pens. If you've got any other paint markers, anything that's matte will work best because then you can go back over it with your other mediums. And, uh, and yeah, I don't know. I just encourage you to get that stencil out and just play with it. You could probably do this with the stamp too, using the same ideas from the stamp video I talked about ages ago. But um, the stencil is what I really wanted to show because I, don't, I see a lot of it uh, pop up and I just want to show people that like if it's just used as a jumping off point, you may never realize that that, st that stencil was what someone used to get to that point. And um, I love this face. And to be honest, the proportions are of the stamp, but really the nose, I pinched in, I made those lips poutier. I made the bottom one bigger. I made the top one, the Cupid's bow more pinched. I put those eyes and uh, really it made them dramatic with those lashes and, uh, you know, just played with the, the pupil and the iris and, you know, it, it's stuff like that that is all minor changes, but overall will give you such a different effect and such a different look. And, um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to show you that this is still using that exact same stencil. If you don't believe me, uh, just watch the video again. You'll see it happen in real time. Well, not real time. Very sped up time. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really fun to play with this stuff. And especially for someone like me that loves to cheat, I, uh, I just, it saves so much time. I don't have to plan out a face. I don't have to, you know, is that eye big enough? Is that eye not big enough? Or where would I put the nose relative to this? Because I already like the way that the stencil's laid out and, uh, and I can totally incorporate it with the things that I like. I have another journal cover coming up. I think it's in part three where I use a reference of one of my own drawings and use the stencil to get to that point. So uh, anyway, I'm gonna show you the close-ups with this and then Hit me back up in video two if you want to see a bunch more of these and a bunch of different ways you can use the face stencil. Mm -hmm.